Okay. Well, one of the things that a lot of the fans out there that are going to be watching the show know is Oblivion. Ah, yes. And Backlash 2 are Oblivion 2. Now, did Peter approach you about that, or did Full Moon approach you about that, or how did you get into that movie? Because your part is just, like, really great on that. Uh, I do like the Star Trek jokes you throw in there, but... <laughs> which, which they're crediting to you. Peter David at 3 o'clock in the oh, morning I know. credited you with that. Oh, I, absolutely. He won't own up to that. <laughs> I mean, I, and he, he has pilloried me for having done that to his script. Um, actually, it was it's Peter's fault, because uh, he's the one that courted me, and he called me. I, I have to be at my New York conference. And he called me there in New York and said uh, he's got the script and he wants um, uh, uh, there's a part in it that he wants me to do, and, and that was when I was uh, uh, part way into my autobiography. And I said to him, you know, I've committed myself to the, this writing, and uh, uh, so I don't want to take time off from it. And he said, George, you'll love it. And he sent the script, and it was wonderful. But I still said to him, you know, um, I, I, I've got deadlines, you know, and I've got to. Uh, 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 work on the script. So then the next call I got was from the uh, director of the uh, film, Sam Irvin, and he started uh, courting me and saying, you know, oh, I'll, we'll make time for you. You can do, uh, work on your writing uh, there in they were to shoot that on location in Romania. He said, you can shoot it on, uh, 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 write it uh, in between uh, shoots uh, there in Romania. We'll make time for you. We'll try to organize your, your uh, shooting schedule so you'll have hunks of time. And you know, I'm a man of ego as well. And uh, to be courted by the author and then the the uh, the uh, director was um, awfully uh, boosting. And so I said, all right, on, on those conditions, I will uh, do it. And we went to Romania, and I, I did work on the book uh, during the uh, breaks. But I saw the script, and I said, you know, well, I mean, it's a fun character, but uh, we can have a bit more fun with it. Uh, uh, I um, think that maybe we should put in some uh, uh, scenes that we could cut out later on and use in the blooper reels uh, for the for oblivion you know and so uh, I came up with some, some thoughts and one of them required a certain prop and in all of Bucharest we couldn't find a Jim Beam bottle so I said to the uh, prop man what can we do to find a, I, I desperately need a Jim Beam uh, bottle to make this thing happen and he said well my assistant's going to London uh, next week and I said oh good good please uh, tell him that it's vital it's imperative for the success of the, the movie that we have a Jim Beam bottle and so he flew off to London and gathered a lot of other props and he came back with a Jim Beam bottle uh, uh, in hand well the scene involves um, I'm a, a grizzled old doctor uh, who's lost one of his best friends, the marshal of the town, and I'm also an alcoholic. And so I'm uh, drowning my sorrows in Miss Kitty's saloon. And finally, you know, she has to close up, so she uh, kicks me out. And so I come staggering out of uh, this saloon with this bottle of Jim Beam. And I lean on the pillar, and I look at the bottle, and I say, Jim. And I, I take a swing from it. And I fully expected that scene to be cut out and to be used uh, in the um, blooper, reel. blooper reel, you know, for the party, the Christmas party for the uh, cast and crew. The director liked it. And he kept it. And Peter hit the ceiling when he saw that. You know, he said, what is George doing to my script? And there are a few other uh, little Star Trek bits like that. You know, I, I had a line, great Scott. And instead I said, great Scotty, you know. <laughs> and so uh, I don't think Peter still has forgiven me for that. Well, I do have a question. Uh, Steve wanted to ask a question because we, we, we are helping Steve Johnson out with a thing today. And Steve has been so kind to help us out on an interview earlier, which we appreciate. Steve, go ahead. What was your question about the book? Have you seen any of the Captain Sulu novels, which Poppy Books have published? Oh, yeah. Yes. And what do you think? I think they're wonderful. And uh, uh, they've also um, uh, uh, got this uh, Captain's Adventures of Captain Sulu uh, audio cassettes. Uh, and uh, I'm having great fun doing those, yes. I noticed they supplied Captain Sulu with a whole uh, panoply of uh, co-stars, just you know, the way Captain Kirk used to have them. <laughs> I would like to see more of them. Is there any chance of that? Well, 
I'm lobbing hard for a Captain Sulu TV series. Really? Well, best of luck. Yes, sir. indeed. Thank you. Actually, speaking of TV series, I heard that you're doing some television work that's coming up. So we're going to go ahead and ask you about upcoming projects that you have that you want everybody out there to know about. Well, keep looking for it. Thank you very much for giving me that opening. I've got a TV movie uh, called The Best Bad Thing. Uh, it's based on a novel by Yoshiko Uchida about um, uh, Japanese immigrants during the uh, Depression 30s in California. Ah. And and um, I, uh, just uh, three weeks ago, uh, completed work on a guest shot on a uh, new TV series called uh, John Woo's Once a Thief. It's a series created by John Woo. Wow. About an international espionage sort of thing. And I, I play the chief anti-terrorist investigator of the Tokyo police, uh, chasing after this uh, international terrorist, uh, Alexa Lundquist, a blonde glamazon from Prague, Czechoslovakia and I catch up with her in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and um, I have a guest shot on a Muppets Tonight coming up. How was that? That was great fun to, to be working with the puppets, you know. I, I told the puppeteer that uh, I've worked with some human actors who uh, these your puppets put to shame. <laughs> we have no idea who he's talking about. It. Uh, not one bit. No. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 Nobody and, and no one will go named uh, yeah. on this. And then next summer, do look forward to uh, Disney's big uh, animated uh, cartoon for uh, the summer of 98. Wow. It's a Chinese story called The Legend of Mulan. You won't see me in it, but you will certainly hear, hear me in it. What, what is that about? Uh, do you have any information it's, uh, on that? Or? Well, yeah. It, it, We've uh, done the work on it. They're still busily working on, you know, the animation part of it. Uh, it's uh, they, it's taken from uh, a legendary Chinese uh, story uh, of the woman warrior, this uh, little girl who uh, go grows up to be a great leader of men in that macho society called China. Oh, well, that's definitely you. Certainly have your playful this whole past year, and we're looking for great for. Looking great? Yeah, we're looking great now. See, look. <laughs> we're looking for great well, things to come in. In two weeks, I'll be uh, starting work on a on a science fiction horror film called Larva. Now, is that for general release? Is that for Sci-Fi Network? What is it? Uh, frankly, I don't know. I think they're planning on it uh, for the big screen. Well, that's good. I play um, uh, a scientist, uh, a special um, uh, investigated odd, peculiar insect life forms, a uh, character called Dr. Fujimoto. Mm. Eccentric, uh, rather bizarre doctor. We're definitely going to have to keep watching that. And speaking of keep watching, you folks have to keep watching because we have a few more interviews coming up. Actually, no, we don't. You're our last one. I am? You are. You are the headliner, sir. You are the well, man. Well, well, that's very flattering, too. See? Thank, thank you, you very thanks. much. <laughs> I'm Larry Snowdy. Thank you so much for watching. Credits are rolling. Bye. Bye.